Covert narcissists are abusive people, but they always come across as harmless. You know, the, the nice guy or the nice girl, the person next door. And that's really the danger in covert narcissism. And it's part of the reason why we fall for it. Because that first impression that they are harmless couldn't be further from the truth. In this video, we're going to explore some of the damage they do, along with some common passive aggressive behaviors that they will use on you throughout your relationship with a covert narcissist. And make no mistake about it, they're using passive aggressive behaviors because they are cowards. So we're gonna get into some deeper stuff about passive aggressive behavior, what it is and what it isn't, and when it's really, really damaging. So if you're ready, let's get to it. Welcome to the Common Ego community. My name is Christina and on this channel we explore narcissistic abuse, its connection with spirituality, and we attempt to answer the question, where do we go from here? So if that all sounds good to you, be sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so you can be notified when I post new videos. And if you're already subscribed, thank you and welcome back. So today we're talking about the cowardly covert narcissist. And we can all agree they're cowards. These people are abusive, but you would never know it from the outside. You probably have a lot of people in your life who struggle to believe that these people are abusive because they come across as harmless. Some of them come across sheepish or awkward, but some of them just come across as just, you know, nice people. And that's the real danger because that's exactly what you think when you meet them. And then we all know what happens from there. Covert narcissists are so often described as wolves in sheep's clothing, which is a fairly accurate description, but it doesn't completely cover it because the wolf isn't super cowardly, is it? And the wolf is a pack animal. They support each other. And the narcissist doesn't really support anyone but his or herself. So yes, they do appear sheepish, maybe from the outside or harmless from the outside. And there is something a little bit more dangerous underneath, actually a lot more dangerous, but the covert narcissist is unlike any animal we've really ever seen. The covert narcissist is equal parts hurtful and cowardly. And those two things kind of seem like, like opposites. And that's what's so confusing and dangerous about these people. And it's also why they're so prone to use passive aggressive moves. They need that plausible deniability so that they can maintain that false perception that people have of them, that they're good people, nice people, that they wouldn't hurt anybody. So let's get into the examples of passive aggressive behavior that you might encounter with a covert narcissist. Now, I'm not going to cover each in depth because I have other videos that touch on these and I know that most of you have lived this so you very well understand what we're talking about here. But I wanted to point out these behaviors and how passive aggressive and ultimately cowardly they are. So first are the crimes of omission. So these are things, and it, it could be something awful like cheating or stealing, something like that, that they don't tell you about and they kind of dance around it. But another way a narcissist can hurt you with a crime of omission is by just not telling you something they should have told you. And then you find out about it and they're like, oh, well, I thought you knew. Another passive aggressive behavior that you may encounter on an everyday basis with a covert narcissist is the backhanded compliment. So, hey, you've done really well for yourself for somebody who has very few skills. They always have that plausible deniability, but you know a backhanded compliment when you see one and they're very good at giving them. All right, so another passive aggressive behavior is a joking insult. So, you know, they say something about you that's super insulting, but oh, I was just kidding. And they say it in a joking way, but you know, there's that saying, the greatest truths are said in jest. If somebody is continually tearing you down with their jokes, they probably really feel that way. And then there are things like gaslighting and projection, which can be outwardly aggressive, but when they're feeling especially cowardly, it's going to come out in a passive aggressive way. Okay. So then there are two extremely damaging and very cowardly ways that the covert narcissist can and will hurt you. And one is abuse by proxy. And abuse by proxy can actually happen throughout the duration of your relationship, but it's much, much more likely to happen after you've cut the narcissist out of your life or gone gray rock. After they realize they can't control you anymore, they are much more likely to abuse you through someone else. Now, an example of how it might happen while you're in a relationship with the narcissist is 
let's say you're having a conversation about something. You're debating something with a narcissist. And I know most of you are with me right now. At this point, I would rather have a root canal than debate anything with a narcissist. But just for the sake of this example, let's say you're debating something with a narcissist and you get your point across and you feel like they got their point across, the conversation's over and you're like, wow, that was relatively painless. That's unusual. And then a couple of days later, maybe a week later, you're talking to a mutual friend or somebody you both know and the topic comes up again. The other person brings it up and seems to be mirroring the narcissist arguments and putting you down for your beliefs and your thoughts and your arguments. And you're taken off guard because you're, you weren't having the conversation with this person. You were having the conversation with the other person. So you're thrown off. You're kind of thrown off your game. Also likely to feel hurt. Like, whoa, wait a second. Why is this coming up? Were they talking about this conversation that we had behind my back? It doesn't seem like it was in a positive light. Like what's going on here? So that's a simple example and a relatively harmless. It's not harmless, but, but compared to the typical abuse by proxy and the things that could happen after you cut a narcissist out of your life, it's, it's, that's a relatively harmless example. But when things like this happen, it really shows you who those flying monkeys are. And it's a hard reality, but it's actually a good realization. It's very helpful to you going forward. So the second cowardly move of a covert narcissist, usually after you have cut them out of your life and they no longer have control over you, is in the way they try to seek revenge. Now these are very much the types of people who will smile in your face while they're plotting behind your back to take you down. This is why the gray rock technique really is so important. And I don't have a video specifically on the gray rock technique. I think a lot of you are already familiar with it, but if you watch my video about how to outsmart a narcissist, there are some great tips there that are very similar to the gray rock technique. So if you need some pointers, I suggest you watch that video because you might think you're in a good place with this person. You might think, okay, well, you know, I broke things off with this covert narcissist, or maybe you embarrass them in some way, but hey, you know, they seem, they, they seem more mature than most narcissists and they're probably over it. Don't trust it. Do, if you're sure you're dealing with a covert narcissist, do not trust it. Again, the cowardly covert narcissist is very likely to appear harmless at many stages in your relationship, even when they're trying to get information from you that they could use against you. So these aren't people that you can trust ever really. And unfortunately, it's so easy to fall into the trap. Even if you've identified this person as a narcissist, and even if you've done everything to really cut them out of your life, if they come back around and they seem nice and they seem normal, maybe they're even apologetic, it's tempting to, to fall back into that, that trusting cycle because, not because of who they are, but because of who you are. So as a species, we are hardwired to need each other. We're hardwired to make social connections and to see the good in people. This is something that from an evolutionary standpoint, we needed for survival. But when it comes to the narcissist, you need the opposite for survival. And that's why it's so hard. It's like you have to rewire your programming to do the opposite of what feels natural to you. So if you're struggling with this, if you're struggling with the gray rock technique, or if you're struggling with no contact, don't beat yourself up over it. It's normal and it's natural to feel this way. And it's actually, it's, it's ultimately a good thing. So how do we protect ourselves? So going forward, it, you might be tempted to just lock yourself away and you know you don't want to meet any more narcissists, right? You don't want to fall into that trap again. And especially knowing how, how harmless the covert narcissist comes across and how damaging they can be, it can be scary because what you see is not what you get with these people. So it can be scary to meet new people and to let new people into your life. But locking yourself away and avoiding meeting anyone new is not a good long-term strategy. We know this, right? The best long-term strategy is to focus on you. Focus on the things you love about yourself and focus on the things you love to do. And if you have people in your life that you love and you trust, focus on those people, focus on those relationships. Shift the focus back to you 
and just keep doing that. If you are struggling with that, I do have a seven day program that might be able to help. I will link to it in the description. As for the cowardly covert narcissist in your life, no contact is best, always the best. If you can handle cutting this person out of your life, do it. And if you can't, hopefully it's for reasons that are outside of yourself. Like you have children together, or maybe this person is in your family and you have to see them at family gatherings. In that case, gray rock is always the best. So what is the gray rock technique? Essentially, it just means becoming absolutely boring to the covert narcissist or any narcissist in your life. So what is a gray rock? It's unemotional, it's boring, it's plain. You could talk to a gray rock, but you're not gonna get anything in return. So essentially that's how you have to become for the narcissist in your life. So whatever they try to trigger you with, you just respond one word answers if you can. Just be as plain and boring as you possibly can. Now I know that a lot of you already know what the gray rock technique is and have been using it or trying to use it in your relationship with a narcissist. And I know that some of you have been struggling with it. So I wanted to talk through two points. If you are struggling with the gray rock technique, there are probably two reasons. One could be that this narcissist is too close to you. In cases like these, it's usually somebody who is in your family, somebody who is very, you know, a, a, maybe a parent or a sibling who has close contact with people who you do not want to cut out of your life and wouldn't cut out of your life. And this is definitely a challenging situation because even if those people remain tight-lipped around the narcissist, there are still ways. If they're that close to your life, there are still ways they can find things out. And so when they come to you, it's a little bit more difficult to remain gray rock because they're talking about things that are active in your life and probably very triggering in the moment. And they might also be actively surprising you with the stuff that they know again and again. This is definitely a more challenging situation. The best way you can handle it is one, to try to weed out any flying monkeys, try to find out where this person is getting their information, and try to make sure that they don't get it from that source anymore. So if it's a person who is relaying information to the narcissist, you maybe have a conversation with that person, and if you've already done that a few times, then it's probably time to stop sharing anything with that person. And then the next thing is just to remember that the gray rock technique is still effective. So the narcissist is feeding off of your reactions. And even though it's more difficult when they're that close to you to not react, it's still helpful. So continue to try. Don't give up on the gray rock technique altogether. Again, it's not as effective if they're getting information about you from somewhere else, but if they're not getting the emotional reaction, which is what they need, that's what they feed off of, it may eventually become boring for them. Okay, so if that situation doesn't apply to you, then the next one probably does. And this is a tough pill to swallow. And I know it's the same for me too. So I'm not calling anybody out without calling myself out. So the second reason the gray rock technique is not working has to do with your own ego. Again, it's, it's hard to hear this, I know, but if you feel like you have to respond to a narcissist, you have to explain yourself, you have to show them they're wrong. What's going on there is they're triggering your ego and your ego is fighting back and your ego is fighting back strong, so strong that it feels impossible for you to not react. And unfortunately, there's no quick fix for this, but we just have to acknowledge that it is the ego and we've all fallen into it too. If you try to go gray rock, you can be great all the time, but then there's that one thing that really gets you and you react emotionally and then you kick yourself for it later. It happens. From there, all you can do is just pick yourself back up and get back on that gray rock. So if you are struggling with this, I suggest you watch my series on the emotional guidance system because that talks about how the narcissist triggers your ego and how they really use your own wounds against you. So just having that knowledge can help reinforce your resolve to react unemotionally. When you know what they're doing, when you know their game, it's a little bit easier to counter it. 
So I'm gonna link to that emotional guidance playlist. If you're struggling with Grey Rock, it might be helpful. So now I wanna hear from you. What is the most cowardly or passive aggressive behavior that you've seen from a narcissist in your life? Let me know in the comments. If you found this video helpful, let me know by hitting that like button. It helps the channel. And if you aren't already subscribed, consider doing so. And I'll see you next time.